Pumpkin spice and neck deep. All right, so FRS guys, this one's a little bit, you know, up your lane. So you guys are pretty familiar with oil leaks on these cars, specifically the front timing cover. This poor guy, now uh, he found me on the, my Instagram page on Velocity Race Fab. So long story short, he put an HK supercharger kit on here, which we have to put back on over there on the table over there, found out that he had an oil leak. Now, for somehow it wasn't from the timing cover itself down there, although this looks to be, you know, something from there initially, but his housing up here by the oil filter was cracked so he tried jb welding it that didn't work out too well for him so he tried pulling the timing cover off to change it out because that's what's in that giant box on the cooler right there but uh buddy ran into some bad luck you can kind of see down in there that pry point that's all chewed up so he pried a little too hard uh we just got the car in here and um, we're, I'm thinking he's missing a bolt or two down there and then you know still got to take some sensors off and whatnot but long story short he was prying a little too hard and back here he broke it. So this isn't the timing cover. I don't know if you guys can see that crack back there. Let me, right there, that separation point. See how it's wiggling like that? So if it is what I'm thinking it is, it's the front cam cap that acts as like a backing plate to this timing cover. So I'm here to try and, well, we, I got my buddy Mike over here and our buddy Alex is on the way. Um, essentially our goal today is to be able to pull the motor. Ideally, we're gonna try and take the timing cover off and, you know, it, assess it first see if we really have to pull the motor but ideally i'm thinking we have to pull the motor i have to do that weld repair and then we have to put everything back together we got the new timing cover over here from toyota so brand new in box and then essentially put the car back together and then the kid was really cool and he was like you know i want to make it worth your time so once you're done with the motor stuff and you know the weld repair then go ahead and make me a three inch overpipe and then a front bash bar so that's what we're doing this is a i want to say a 14 FRS and uh, yeah, pretty solid little car. Um, yeah, not a whole lot to say about it. I mean, got smacked in the back over there. Poor quarter panel, his neighbor's daughter backed into him. But yeah, that's kind of the job for today. So we're gonna kind of take you guys through this and see if we can get this guy put back together, weld repaired, and uh, yeah, back on the street because the, the kid just wants his car back. It's been a, sounds like it's been a hot minute since he was driving this thing. And I mean, I wanna hear the HKS kit too. So let's, uh, let's get cracking at this. Well, found his issue on why he couldn't get it out. He was missing a bolt. Forgot, or I should say he forgot a bolt. The bolt was in place. It wasn't missing. He just didn't see it. So we got to pull the radiator to get it out, at least the upper hose for sure. And then, oh, you already got the air. No, the air compressor doesn't have to come off, I guess. But, yeah, so now you can kind of see more the extent of the damage down yonder. That whole, damn, that whole plate is cracked all the way down behind the cam phaser here. Oh shit. Yeah, so that's uh Yeah, it's all the way back. Damn. Yeah, we'll see about that cuz that's like the engine itself. Mhm. Mm Maybe his engine is Dickeroni and cheese. That Shit. Should have bought a Honda. Yeah, that's uh that's no bueno. I mean, at least it's not a main mechanical component, but it's more of a sealing issue, so oh, yeah. yeah, I guess get this out and figure it out. Feel it nowhere. We just gonna have to be here for a minute. <laughs> it might be the cam cap still. We'll find out here in a minute. Just gotta get the radiator out of the way, so the hose is out of the way, so we can pull this cover off. And yeah, otherwise, this thing looks like it just needs a reseal. Honestly, it's crusty. Oh. Oh yeah. Wait for to quit pissing. I don't want to get corn in there. Let's just do that for a minute. Of 
course that housing has to be plastic. And it has to be a pain to get off, too. bracket in the video the guy took the bracket off that I seen but <laughs> yeah buddy <laughs> well finally found a part number so instead of trying to weld repair because the crack does go all the way down uh, we're just gonna put the new part in just called the guy said he's you know let's go for it it's like a little over three three and a half Three, three and a half hundred, three like three fifty ish from Toyota. It's 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 a weird assembly. It's not just you can't buy just the one piece. It's like a cam carrier housing, something like that. And yeah, so got that in order. That'll be here tomorrow. So I guess really all we can try and get done today is get access and get everything out, and then yeah, fix it. So let this be a lesson if you're ever uh, you know doing your timing cover reseal on your on your own car. Don't miss the bolt. Yeah, don't miss the bolts. And uh, yeah, we'll find out. I know the biggest gripe that I was seeing when I was doing the research before I took this job on was everybody was saying stuff about, you know, the silicone that you have to put on the front and stuff, not to put too much and, you know. So, you know, they've got software that tells them where to do what and how to do this. So we should have the diagram to be able to figure out how much and where to put the silicone. So we're not too worried about that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Good to have guys that know what they're doing though, because I'm more of a fabricator than a mechanic and so that's what I got these guys for. Hell yeah, we get it. <laughs> Teamwork make the dream work. It's just like with the lights off, you don't know what you're doing, you just know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get the coil packs out and the spark plugs. Got the what got the valve cover off, so came right out. Yeah, that's a little tiny guy. Oh he said the gasket will be here today. He's gonna have his mom bring it by later. Gasket's still mint. We don't reuse no, parts. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> Making you exposing yourself on my video. I'm so impressed with how clean it is, though. Yeah. Doesn't look bad at all. The car's not that old, but still. Nah. Well. Now we just got. Oh, we do have to do the timing stuff, don't we? Oh, I don't mm -hmm. think so. Take the cams out. I don't think so. The assembly. No, we're not replacing it all. We're just replacing the cams thing. We just have to buy everything to replace that. Oh, man. But isn't it all machined together? No, no, no. It's all know. bolts on. Not this is a, it, this is its own piece, and it's got. Should I? Oh, damn it. What happened? Cut my hand open, bro. Oh here. Yeah, it's fine. He's fine. Yeah, this thing ain't gonna move at all. Having the chain on will keep the cam from popping out or doing anything crazy, and it's under tension. It'll be fine. The back of the cam, as long as we don't take these back two out and leave this one in, that's no no because you're pulling all the pressure on this is in the front of the cam, it's not on the back of the cam. Yeah. Being it's just the one side, it should be okay. I understand. I'll just loosen them a little bit and make sure nothing moves, you know what I mean? Everything should be okay. I don't like doing none of that type of stuff. <laughs> I've done worse. I'll stick to welding. I'll put a motor in all day. I just don't want to take the motor, uh, you know, apart at all. Look at that. It's like I know what I was doing. I can pry it from the bottom. Don't pry too hard. I can't see it. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> it's a great well, That's the moral of the whole video. Don't pry too hard. Right. You don't tell don't me. pry too hard and don't miss a bolt. <laughs> yeah, he was missing a bolt on there. Go, bud. Oh yeah, all the way down. Oh yeah, top and bottom. Whole thing. Almost literally broke this piece completely off. Yeah. Damn. Yep. I would not fix this. No. And it's warped already. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. This would always leak right there. Right there. That would always leak, dude. Yeah, if we were on the side of the road, we needed to fix it. We just right. happened to have a welder and yeah, right. <laughs> you Make know, the car halfway apart real yeah, quick, and get us home. But yeah, no, nah, at least in this in this case, yeah, we definitely got to replace this. So I'm gonna send the guy a few photos just so he feels comfortable. And uh, yeah, so oh, I guess you're in the 
light. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna send the guy a few photos. So in the meantime, yeah, we're kind of at a standstill until the new parts show up tomorrow. And then, um, yeah, it almost looks like there's a little bit of wear on this, no? Yeah. On the cams? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. But in the meantime, I suppose I can start on the uh, overpipe. Um, he wanted three inch, but I was just doing some, you know, reading, and there's only like two guys that make three inch one. Apparently, you gotta lift the motor and do all that, so. Uh, he doesn't really want to spend the extra money. If the motor's not coming out, I'm not going to go and charge him extra for making a three inch. So we're going to do two and a half. I just got to pull the old overpipe out really quick and see if the local shop up the street has the flanges for it. Since we're still waiting on the parts, it is now, you know, a little bit later in the afternoon. Uh, the other guys went home for the day since, you know, again, we're waiting on parts. So I'm going to work on, you know, making the overpipe or the up pipe, whatever you want to call it on this thing. Uh, he just wanted one custom, and there's a few brands that make them already, but you know, what's one more? So, what I've done here is, I went and got the flanges, two of them for me, two of them for the fixture, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, jig this thing up, because, for two reasons, I mean, one, because it's going to be, you know, that way I can replicate it, and two, because it is so difficult to get these things in and out of here, I don't want to have to try and build it on the vehicle, because it's just going to be a nightmare, so... If I just jig it up and then I build it on the fixture or the jig or whatever, and then it should be just good to go from that. And then I can just take it off of here and bolt it on the car. So uh, I'm pretty new to building pipe fixtures. So, you know, it's going to be a little tricky. I just built my first one over here the other day. Well, second one technically, because this is for Canon intakes for the S2000. And I'm going to make uh, an OEM one, but I want to start making these out of titanium because I've had a few inquiries. So... This is what I came up with the other day, and it's not too shabby. So hopefully I can figure out something like that for this guy over here. But in the meantime, yeah, this guy is just kind of chilling while we wait on the parts. All right, so it's it's been quite a few hours now. It is 6 in the evening, and uh, I just finally got this thing pieced together to where I'm starting to weld it out. I'm starting with the flanges down there, as you can see. That way, those are good to go. Dude, it, for you, anybody else that makes like exhaust jigs and stuff, this is my first one ever. Dude, kudos to you guys. This stuff is hard. So I took the factory, uh, you know, pipe here, and I made the jig off of that. That took forever to get this last piece. Uh, I want to say it was like right here. I just could not, for the life of me, get the angle right because it's so funky. Because it's so tight off that, as you can see. So I'm just glad this one's actually done. So hopefully. I want to make another one, not right away, but you know, after this car is done and out of here, I want to make another one to try and sell. But any local guys, I have a buddy, well, I have two friends that have FRSs slash 86, whatever. So I want to try and test it on theirs. So the jig itself is pretty darn close. Um, yeah, I don't know. The only part that's tripping me up is this piece here, which is this section here because there's a dent on the factory one right here. I don't know why. So I got to trim that piece off. This one does fit. The only piece that I had to modify was for whatever reason this was jigged up perfect and that's obviously what was on the vehicle but when I made it with this piece it was like 3 8 of an inch short so I took this end and I lengthened it 3 8 of an inch and it's it's like a perfect fit now but yeah no anybody that does this stuff regularly dude so much respect to you guys and if you guys have any tips for me please by all means leave it in the comments down below because like this is tough but I'm glad that I was able to learn something and uh, you know, I just wanna get better at it for sure. I am exhausted though, it is hot as crap in here right now, it's still summertime here in Arizona. So um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the morning when they got, you know, when the guys come back, they can start finishing the car up on the mechanical side and then I'll finish welding this out tomorrow. And then uh, we'll have to get Corey down here and teach me how to build a bash bar without my computer program because my computer decided to die. Not my editing laptop, but my Dell that had the program on it and I don't know how to put, you know, Windows stuff programs on a Dell or on a MacBook. So still learning. I'm not computer, I, you know, I'm so computer illiterate. It's not even funny, but anyways, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. All right, back up next day. Already finished up the overpipe. Um, turned out pretty well. The fixture, I think I'm like, you know, eight and a half out of 10 happy with. The only issue that I saw was the the end flange was slightly warped. And I don't know if that was because of me welding it in a certain direction, you know, applying too much heat or if that's because the fixture is slightly off. But like, that's where it's trippy. Cause like I built it perfectly to the other one and then even modified the end piece on the car so it is what it is but right now got the uh, gasket junk taken off of this guy so just working on getting the new cam cap on and getting cleaned up to reassemble so we're still waiting on the valve cover gasket 
I'm just gonna figure out where everything goes. Hey y'all. <laughs> hey. What's going on? Got a nice seal on there. Slowly but surely. Yep, it made it up nice. You can kind of see my thing down there. Look at that. Yeah. Par. When he's hard parked, they'll be able to see my little tag under there, which would be cool. So, yeah, little by little. I think the moral of the story is still for this whole video don't use too much silicone. And don't miss a bolt. And don't miss a bolt. <laughs> all right, cover's all sealed up. Maybe. Fill that. There we go. Ready to go on. Shout out Tristan for the Hanabon Ultra Flange. Guide that side in. You see there how it feels go. inside right here? That's what I want because uh, then it'll seal the screw as it th uh, you know, threads into the. Engine. I gotcha. Makes sense. That's why, like, you always see the silicone on the bolt itself is because they want that bolt to seal because there's oil on the back side of it. Oh. Uh -huh. That makes sense. I'm just always anxious about gooping it. That's why I'm always like very cautious when spreading it and just trying to get like an even layer. What the heck? Oh, I <laughs> the shit out of you. <laughs> got, a, got a monster under the hood. So everybody gonna see that like neon green and think you're running with the Ryobi gang. <laughs> what, this? Yeah. This is yellow. Whatever, I'm colorblind, I don't know. Apparently. <laughs> oh, that's not the right bolt. Look like a Ryobi to me. That bolt don't go in there. Too short? Too long. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's the block. Well, it would have to go there because there's no other bolt shorter on this whole cover. I went, I checked them all. Alright. Currently trying to figure out the uh, Order of operations here for the 32 different sandwich plates to go with the oil cooler because obviously cooler itself and then the sandwich plate and then the filter like this is the one sandwich plate and there's like a bunch of fittings and we got to fit this guy with this guy which actually has oil passages because it doesn't just you know sit down in there because there's lip that's here so yeah the guy didn't leave us the instruction manual that came with this whole supercharger kit so kind of bummy so we're kind of just trying to figure it out but Timing cover sealed up good. We're just waiting on the valve cover gasket set that the kid's supposed to be dropping off here in a bit whenever it shows up. But yeah, you know, just dilly dallying. Alright, so got cover on. I think we covered that in the last clip. Uh, working on mocking the supercharger kit up. Uh, owner brought down the valve cover gasket and tube seals, so that's all put back together. And uh, missing a bunch of pieces for the kit, and we can't even put all of it together because. I'm building them a crash bar still, I just can't do that today. So the intercooler, the oil cooler, that all gets mounted separately. So right now the guy just ran down to the hardware store to find some spacers. These bolts here, but in, you know, overall, you know, the kit fits pretty well. Bumper bar is coming along pretty solid, so I've got the front of it bent up right now, or the top portion of it. I've got the support tubes notched, so right now I am working on the base plates. So I'm just copying them directly from the factory crash bar. Now the weird part is there's a slight bend as you can see, so that's what I'm replicating right now. Um, thankfully, you know, I do have my little metal brake, so it makes it actually doable. So just a little bit of a bend like that. Pretty much just try and match that angle. And we're looking pretty good, so let me just check fitment. And um, we are right on the money, so that's perfect. So now I can go ahead, I can bolt these in, and then I can, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld the supports to the tube off, because I already got it marked dead nut center from that guy. And then all I have to do is position and figure out the height, because I do want the top of this tube, or I guess, yeah, yeah, I want the top of that tube to be close with the original, you know, top of this guy, so, or, you know, middle to top, so somewhere in this area, so it should be pretty easy, but yeah, 
chugging along. And then the bottom tube, I already know the bending of the bottom tube is going to be easy. The hard part is going to be figuring out the tubes that are going to attach the top to the bottom. So ideally I'm going to have obviously my top one going along here, bottom one coming along here, and then one coming from here to here. So the bend will be easy. That'll just be like a 45. But just figuring out the notch is going to be a little tricky on both sides. But we'll get it done. And then just got to make little brackets to mount the intercooler and oil cooler again. And yeah, we're cooking. So the, the bash bar will be done today. It's, you know, it's midday right now. It's, I think it's just about noon. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all tacked together, probably get some lunch and come back and finish this. So it has been a very long day. It is about seven o'clock in the evening right now. I just finished up with the bash bar. Now it doesn't look like super crazy on camera, maybe, but it, it's a lot of work. You know, it's two whole tubes. We got the support tubes here on each side. Then we got s secondary tubes coming from the base plates down for extra structure. All the caps or all the ends are capped and welded. And you know, this thing's good to go back on the car. I'm just gonna clean up my Sharpie marks really quick that are exposed. And uh, yeah, this thing's ready to be bolted up. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it, to be honest. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna jig it up to make more. I might in the future. I just may reconsider the design because those secondary legs really took me all day or all afternoon like these ones down here incredibly difficult because I don't do this very often and you're you know you're going off of two different you know axes two different planes or whatever but it's done it's all that matters it looks pretty good so yeah now I can bolt that up but you know technically it's still not done because it still needs the intercooler tabs but I gotta call it a day I'm gonna come back probably tomorrow start trying to mock up the intercooler and stuff but uh, yeah I don't know I think I'm going to end the video off here, though, and we'll pick this up in the next one in part of the next video. Um, but anyways, guys, thanks for spending some time out of your day with me here. I know the video is kind of all over the place, and I apologize for that. I just got, you know, a lot going on. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. You know, go to my new website, VelocityRacer.com, pick up a t-shirt. Just check the website out in general. Get the, you know, the flow going, uh, you know, the traffic to the website. I'm starting to learn a tiny bit about search engine optimization, I think it's called. I don't know. I'm not a computer guy, but anyways, do what you love. Forget about the rest. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.